Hi, it's me, and you're watching another episode of The Novel Noms, and today we're gonna make things that are good enough for wizards. Novel Nom. Do, 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 do. Today, we have to talk about Harry Potter. The one I love about Harry Potter is, you know, they're the fantasy and it's there are great stories about relationships and struggle and all that great stuff and triumph over evil. But what's even better about those books to me was the fact that it got a nation of children to read. I mean, we had books that I loved when I was a kid. But nothing quite so dynamic and, and so like worldwide, you know, just the excitement over it. They got kids that maybe wouldn't have picked up a book to read these great stories about Harry Potter and his friends. I know that there's two things that are eaten and drank in the book over and over and over again. And one of them is the pumpkin pasties that are sold at the... Um, the food truck and at the school and the other one is the butterbeer and I know that they're both served also on the train to Hogwarts so we have to make them so let's go the first thing we're gonna make are the pumpkin pasties so the first thing I want to do is preheat my oven get that going and I'm gonna make the filling for my pasties which are really like little individual pumpkin pies so good so the first thing we need, of course, is pumpkin. I get pure pumpkin. You could actually buy one of those little um, pie pumpkins at the store and cook it and follow all the directions. You can find those online. Um, but this is easier. And the great thing is, you know, if you don't want to make all this stuff, you really could just buy a can of pumpkin pie filling that already has all of the all these ingredients in there. Um, it just won't taste as fresh and as good, but it'll do. You could also use your leftover sweet potatoes if you have some left from your Thanksgiving dinner. We're going to put in one egg. We're going to put in some brown sugar. I don't know about you, but I hate dirtying a lot of dishes, though my husband would probably beg to differ with you. So I tend to use just one, one cup measure as long as I'm not using any wet ingredients because I can use it over and over again. You just got to be able to eyeball it when it's halfway. So I'm going to put a half cup of brown sugar. You can put more, you can put regular sugar depending on how sweet you like it. It's all up to you. A teaspoon of salt. People always wonder why you put salt in sweet things. And really, salt brings out the flavor. I don't know if you've ever known anybody that puts salt on their watermelon or their, their cantaloupe. It brings out the flavor and the sweetness. Um, I think it's all a balance. So if you didn't have the salt in there, it wouldn't taste the same. About a half teaspoon of cinnamon. You notice that I eyeball a lot of this. Just from doing this for a long time, I know that's about a half teaspoon. Obviously, you could have these standing by and measured out if you don't want to eyeball it. About a half, half teaspoon of ginger. Half teaspoon of allspice. And I'm just going to put a couple shakes of nutmeg in there. I'm going to put about a half cup of evaporated milk in there. Just give it some of that creamy texture. Just mix it up. Now you'll notice that it is a little bit soupy, like it's a little bit runnier. And you may worry about that seeping out of your yummy little pumpkin pasties. But we're going to put this in the microwave for a few minutes so that'll, so that'll firm it up and kind of cook it a little bit. We'll stick this in the microwave for about five minutes. is to get your crust ready. Now you could definitely make your pie crust from scratch, whatever your favorite recipe is. I think that's too hard. <laughs> I'm not a baker. Like I don't mind baking things, but I, I much prefer to cook things on the stove. So I go the easy route and I buy um, frozen pie crust. You can also get the ones that are like by the, by the rolls, like the Pillsbury rolls. Um, they just come in sheets, but I think these are kind of easier to, come, uh, to work with and they're cheaper because they come with the pie plate in there. I just take them out and lay them on a piece of wax paper about 15 minutes before I want to use them and they're thawed and they're perfect and then I pop them out of the, the tin and now I can use the tin for something else if I want to. So I'm going to use a glass and I'm going to cut some circles. The bigger the glass, the bigger the circle, the less you're going to get out of it. So I get about four out of this. And these will be great because we're going to actually fold them over so they'll just be like a little had a roller, a rolling pin, and some chutzpah. 
you may want to just put all this together and re-roll that out and get some more out of it. I took this out of the microwave and you see how it's a little bit cakier? Essentially what you're trying to do is cook the egg. It's kind of like you're making pumpkin pudding. I don't want to melt my pie crust. I don't want to burn my hands. So I need to chill this before I fill the pie crust. So I'm just going to stick this in the freezer for about 10 minutes. Freezer. These pumpkin pasties are very similar if you're, if you're familiar at all with empanadas. It's a Mexican pastry that's filled with all different kinds of things. Um, and pumpkin is a very popular one. They're very similar and they're so great for Christmas morning, for Thanksgiving morning when you have people coming over, your family's getting ready, making the dinner. It's just a fun little treat that's better than any donut you'll ever buy at a, at a grocery store. And you can fill them with more than just pumpkin filling. You can fill them with apple pie filling. You could do a, a savory thing and fill them with some meat and potatoes. If you have leftover turkey and mashed potatoes, obviously you might want to do a little bit bigger. Obviously you might want to do a little bit bigger round, but you could fill it with turkey and mashed potatoes and fold it over and pinch it and, and serve that as kind of a neat way to, to, to serve your leftovers. You could fill them with just about anything. The cranberry sauce, maybe a little bit of stuffing. Oh my god. All right, my bowl is cool to the touch. You see that my filling has a little bit more, it's like jiggling like a pudding. Jiggle. I'm gonna transfer my little round pastry squares. They're not gonna rise like cookies, so you don't have to worry about putting them too close to each other. And all we're gonna do is just take a little teaspoon, maybe even less than that, depending on how big they are, obviously. Put some you wanna leave at room around the edges. Fold it over and just crimp it with a fork. Just push down. We're going to take an egg, the egg white. You're going to just going to brush some egg white onto your pumpkin pasty. A little brush. Call this an egg wash in the business business. To do just to add a little extra zhuzh to it is just sprinkle a little tiny bit of brown sugar and just a little dash of cinnamon. We're just gonna put this in the oven. These are smaller, so they probably only gonna have to cook for maybe six to eight minutes. Just keep an eye on them. You'll know that they're done by when they turn brown. Because we don't have to worry about the inside being cooked because we already cooked it in the microwave. So you don't have to worry about raw eggs or raw ingredients or whatever. Okay, so while those are baking, we are going to make the butter beer. It'll go really well with the pumpkin pasties. And again, this would be the ultimate, like Christmas morning treat or Christmas Eve treat. Oh, I am going to put one tablespoon of butter, two tablespoons of honey. of milk. A lot of the recipes call for regular white sugar. I prefer brown sugar because it's got a, like a deeper flavor to it. And two tablespoons of brown sugar. Get that nice and dissolved. I'm going to put in a teaspoon of vanilla and the special ingredient, butterscotch schnapps. Now again, if you're making this as an under 21 drink or a non-alcoholic drink, you could use butterscotch syrup or like the kind you put in your coffee. That's fine. However, I prefer to use the butterscotch not. I'm going to put one shot, and if you have like a regular glass shot glass from Idaho in the largest bundle of wheat, I don't know, potatoes, you could use that shot glass. I'm going to put one shot, oh, one shot in there. You could put two if you want to make it extra yummy and extra alcoholy. And you notice that my milk is starting to bubble. So you want to keep an eye on that because milk burns fast. So if it starts to boil up like that, take it off the heat. That means it's hot and it is ready to go. At the very end, you're going to mix in 
just a teaspoon, maybe a half teaspoon of cinnamon. You can add in some like hot chocolate powder might be yummy if you want to make it more chocolatey. But we just want a very basic butter beer. And this is really hot, so I'm going to let it cool just a little bit and check on my pumpkin pasties. Ooh, they look really good. So you've got your warm butter beer. You could put it in a mug, but I want you to kind of see how yummy it looks. And you've got some the uh, cinnamons floating in there, and it's warm, and it smells so good. You can smell the butter, and you can smell the butterscotch and mix together with the sugar. Oh my goodness, the pumpkin pasties. That's goodness. And then you've got your pumpkin pasties. Your pumpkin pasty. So good, and you can see it's like a baby little pumpkin pie. Oh my goodness, they're really good, like warm, not like really super hot. But you could let them get cold too, and then just throw them in the microwave for like 30 seconds, a plate of them, before your guests come. Be sure to give them some butter beer and talk about wizards, and Harry Potter, and books. And how phenomenal this amazing dessert slash breakfast slash late night snack will be.